Uh, I'm going to try to explain you what the difference is between doing liposuction and doing a tummy tuck. Liposuction is mostly a procedure to shape the body, to try to decrease the amount of fat that usually is located in the abdomen, upper and lower, in the waist area that goes from the armpits all the way down to the hips and the whole back. This is what we call a torso liposuction, it's pretty much a concentric removal of all the fat in these areas from the lower pubic area to below your breasts, from the armpits down to the hips and in the back the complete area. When we do a complete liposuction like this that we can do because of the decreased dosage of lidocaine that I use as I published in the American Journal of Cosmetic Surgery, we can remove uh, all the extra fat and really shape the body in a way that looks more, much more pleasing. Many times we use this fat to enhance areas that require more shaping like the buttocks, the breasts, the calves or even the face when there's some aging atrophy. When we perform liposuction, if the skin is still in good shape and it still has enough elasticity, the skin will shrink and conform to the new body shape without showing any evidence of sagging or stretch marks or any other significant issues. Now, when besides having extra fat, you have a lot of skin sagging, mostly because of previous pregnancies with stretch marks and many times also with very significant laxity and lack of strength of the abdominal musculature, even with a very thorough liposuction, you might still see a little belly that is related not to leaving excess fat, but to the muscles protruding in what many people call a beer belly. In those instances in which you might be concerned about excessive skin, a lot of damage to the skin with stretch marks, and also the muscle weakness, that's when we advise to also perform a tummy tuck that is called an abdominal plastic. The performance of a tummy tuck by itself without performing liposuction at the same time in my view is just not appropriate. And the reason is that if you get a tummy tuck you can tighten the muscles, get rid of the extra skin, but if you don't do at the same time a liposuction, the shape you are going to get is really not improved. That's what I call a tamale shape. And that's sadly one of the ways that it's done mostly in the US. When I perform a tummy tuck, either I do a previous liposuction in very large ladies that have a lot of, of extra fat, I like to do the liposuction weeks or months before the tummy tuck, and in that way we can have the end result that we're looking at that is increased shape and lack of extra skin and very tight abdominal muscles. In ladies that are medium sized or even small sized, I do what's called a lipoabdominoplasty. The lipoabdominoplasty entails the performance of the liposuction, shaping the body, using the extra fat if we need to reshape other areas, like I said before, the buttocks, the breast, the face, the hands, the calves. And at the same time, during that same procedure, performing the abdominoplasty or tummy tuck. When we perform the tummy tuck, I like to do a very significant tightening of the abdominal musculature and that part of the procedure is the one that can give some pain in the post-operative period. For that I routinely advise my patients to get a pain pump that we put a little catheter that goes inside the plication of the muscle and another below the scar area and with this the recovery after a tummy tuck is very easy and with very minimal pain. After the tummy tuck I ask my patients to try to walk a little bit less straight than usual so the scar is under less tension and the final scar is as thin as possible 
and it's always located under the bikini. So even with a tiny bikini, the scar should not be obvious. When we recreate the belly button in the, in the new skin area, we try to make it uh, oval shaped and inny as we call it, not outside but inside, not protruding, and without any evidence of sutures around it, so we do the suturing from the inside, so the belly button looks totally natural, almond shaped, and very nice. Uh, I always advise my patients to, before getting a tummy tuck, to be wearing a abdominal binder for at least three weeks, day and, day and night, to be accustomed to feeling so tight because the abdominal muscle plication can cause the sensation that you cannot breathe very easily if you're not used to that abdominal binder before time. And that also enhances the chances that I will tighten the muscles even more. Like any surgical procedure, liposuction or tummy tuck can have problems. The problems are related to the technique that is used, to the experience of the surgeon, and in many ways to the preoperative characteristics of the patient. In all my patients, I do a pre-op evaluation at least 10 days before the surgery where we evaluate uh, heart, lungs, blood work, blood pressure, and we try to optimize these situations to decrease the surgical risk. When a patient is taking medications that might interfere with the medications we use during the surgery, we usually advise to, to stop them at least two weeks before surgery. And that usually includes medications that can compete with the clearance of lidocaine. Lidocaine is a local anesthetic I use for liposuction and or tummy tuck. This lidocaine is the same drug that your dentist uses when he deals with your dental problems. And we have a chance of using lidocaine up to 35 milligrams of lidocaine per kilo of body weight. Anything in excess of that dosage is risky for you. So I always stay within that dose range. And that might imply that if you have a very large volume of fat to be removed, I might have to do the liposuction in two stages. stages. Let's say just the front of the abdomen and waist in one stage and the back in a second stage. And that's just because of the dosage of lidocaine that we have to keep within a normal and adequate range. For example, if you are interested in doing full body liposuction, that's just not possible with one single stage procedure. I would most of the time advise, for example, to do the liposuction of the, th of the torso, that includes abdomen, waist, and back, if you are not too large. And in a second stage, do arms, and thighs. With this staging of the procedure, the risks of the surgery decrease dramatically. I still use a significant amount of contouring during my procedures based on the decreased dosage of lidocaine that I used based on my publication that I already mentioned. The performance of the liposuction and the tummy tuck at the same time is feasible if I'm able to keep that dosage of lidocaine within normal range. In many patients, probably most of them, I also do what's called a mild conscious sedation, is what I call a double tequila shot, and what that gives you is a little more peaceful procedure. You are still awake, but you are really not concerned or worried. There is no pain during the procedure and the recovery is very easy and uh, without any significant consequences. Still, before your procedure, we are going to review the informed consent. There's close to 11 patients of informed consent where all the lists of possible complications are presented to you. The chance that that occurs is extremely, extremely small. That includes infection, bleeding, perforation of abdominal viscera, uh, seroma formation and even death. How often does, does that occur? Extremely, extremely rare, but we have to mention it just because that's always a possibility. The only way that we can avoid completely any risk is not doing anything. In our personal experience, complications are pretty much non-existent. 
but it is always something that we discuss very thoroughly with you so you understand what you are getting into. The post-operative phase is critical. We will give you a very, very uh, complete guidelines of how to take care of yourself after the procedure. It is very important that you have somebody with you the first 24 hours, so if you need help, you can get it immediately. Usually we discharge you from our clinic a few hours after your procedure. You should be already be able to ambulate, to urinate, to eat, to drink foods, to be completely awake. And with that, we minimize the chances that you will have any problem. It is critical after an abdominoplasty that you follow our instructions mainly of not staying in bed. You have to be walking as much as you can after this procedure so you minimize the risks of blood clots. That is probably the main complication in these procedures if you are just staying in bed. That actually will make you feel much worse. The pain will be much significant than if you are walking and active. Now, Strenuous exercise has to be avoided uh, usually for about three weeks to one month after the procedure. Usually when we do a tummy tuck we use absorbable sutures under the skin so we don't have to remove any stitches and your recovery should be relatively easy if you follow all our instructions. The results as you can see in our website before and after pictures are usually extremely nice Patients are uniformly very happy with their results, but of course everybody is different in shape and the possible outcomes are going to be specified to you, showing you cases that are very close to your current situation so you can see what kind of outcome you should expect to get. It is obviously impossible to give you a very tiny shape if you come in and you are already quite large. There is going to be a limit to what we can do based on the intra-abdominal fat content, what we call visceral fat, of your general body structure. There's people that have very short torsos, in which cases we cannot get a very long, narrow waist. Or you might have very uh, abnormal uh, shapes because of issues with your lumbar spine or because of uh, a very excessive uh, protrusion of their abdominal muscles to the side. So all those issues might preclude a perfect result, but we will try to be as objective as possible before your procedure so you understand it thoroughly. The informed consent will be sent to you uh, by email or fax to your house once you schedule your procedure. We encourage you to read it very, very thoroughly on your pre-op that is usually 10 days before the surgery. We are going to ask you if you have any questions. We will discuss the main things about the consent so you can really understand it. We will answer any questions about your informed consent. And after you get your pre-op and we schedule you, you will sign the consents stating that you understand fully what is going to happen to you and what are the possible risks and benefits of your procedure. If you have any questions about the possible outcomes, the risks, the informed consent process, the financial issues related to your procedure, the recovery phase, anything that you need to know, we're here for you every time and either myself, my patient coordinator and patient educator our nurses will be able to answer any of your questions or concerns. And please make sure that you follow up with us as we instruct you to, so we can follow your recovery and make sure that if we detect any abnormality, we can correct it right away. Thank you.